It's time now for Anderson Speedway's Track Talk. Catch up with everything that's going on at Anderson Speedway with Rick Dawson and Gary Mong. <laughs> good evening. Welcome. Good evening. Good afternoon. Good morning. Whenever you're listening Whenever. to us. Rick Dawson and <laughs> Gary Mong. We are at the Mounds Mall Special Events Studio doing Anderson Speedway. We are. <laughs> how are and how are you? This, I'm fine. I just got to get over. <laughs> you got me going right before we come on the air, and I can't. Part can't of the compose, warm-up. I can't compose. Myself. Did you ever go to a taping of a television show like out in L.A.? Never or have. No. Or Indy? No. They always have warm-up. Right. Comedians. That's what I was doing. You was doing the warm-up. I was doing the warm-up for the show. <laughs> well, you got me. <laughs> but if you do what I told you, you'd be exactly a man. <laughs> Let's, we, let's talk racing. Let's talk about some racing. Let's do. Okay. Are you want to talk about politics or anything else? Are no. we allowed to do that on our show? Well, you do. So <laughs> the views and opinions of this. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. See, tomorrow night's another big debate. Yes. The it's Donald, right and now today he's saying that he really likes Carly, Fiona, Fiorini, Fiona, or whatever. something. Yeah. And Ben Carson, I guess that's kind of better him up so they don't punch him out on the Probably. <laughs> the three uh, of them together. Can you imagine, though, the three of them together? Running this country. Oh, man, wouldn't that be awesome? But we'll see. I'm sure there's a lot lot more folks out there I that think are so. qualified to do a good job also from both parties. Okay. How's that? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Wow. Myself? Boy, you did. Great job. We had some good racing. There was a lot of racing going on this weekend. And yes, there was. We had good racing at the Speedway, but it's typical, typically our slowest night of the year. I don't know why. I went back 19 years. And this week, and it was because, and it's even before the Richmond race when they had the chase and everything, but that Richmond race, for some reason, uh, always hurt It's us. a night show, yes. And I'm not even sure that's what, Doug, because NASCAR and the past several years you know they went to saturday nights on some of them and and most of the time it doesn't affect our crowd at all uh this week and there was a great race and i don't blame the fans at all that went down there i understand it was a great race uh the the world figure eight three hour figure eight enduro down to speed room right understand Ben, ben Tunney. Ben Tunney. Yes. Who won a race at our track this year, I think. He's Yes. He's won one. Uh, he won the National Crown last year. Name that's synonymous with figure eight racing. Won right. the uh, coveted trophy. I guess he beat out Artie Ware from, uh, down from Kentucky. Artie's another good yes, racer. Yes, he is. Love to have him. Hopefully, they'll all be up to our place here in a I few weeks. I think they will be. Uh, and Because uh, it's always played to the Tunney family. It's just... Like they know figure eight racing. Synonymous with figure eight racing, but I know Mike Riddle Jr. was down there, and several of our guys. I haven't seen the full results. But I understand uh, what uh, the talk was that Jesse Tunney pretty well had him covered, and something broke on the car uh, and took him out. Um, but uh, he, I guess, he had him covered. We were a little short on cars in some of our divisions, but that didn't stop the good racing. It was great racing. We had uh, street stocks. Uh, Josh Power, who has pretty much dominated the division this year. Uh, set fast time. Andrew Cook won the heat. Race. He did. And Josh Poor won the feature. But I want to give hats off to uh, Missy Weininger and I'm trying to think who else sat on the who sat on the pole with Missy. Was it the uh, 29 car of? Yeah, uh, might have been. Or not 29. We didn't have a 29. The 34 car. I cannot yeah. recall who was on the inside. But Missy was on the outside, and for a good six or seven laps, they were racing hard. They were. And Missy was on the outside and held her ground. She did. And got the lead. And then uh, then I talked to her a little later on. Josh and uh, Willie D. Hart was coming through the field, and she said the handling just went totally away. Not sure if it was tire pressure or what it was, but uh, she ended up finishing fifth in the feature, but uh, Willie Dehart, who's had a had a great car this year, him has. and Andrew Cook uh, put on a great race. That the cars were pretty similar. Andrew might have had just a little faster car in the straightaways, but uh, Willie was Guy able in to the turns. pull yeah. him out in the corners. And Andrew never could get up uh, to the side or get his fender up to the door. But it was clean racing. But it was good clean yes, racing. It was. And 
in a good race. And again, congratulations, Josh Poor. Can't say enough about that young yeah. man. He's a he's a great race car he driver, is. and whatever he gets in, and it looks like he might be heading to uh, to another championship. And if so, it'd be well deserved. But he's got some stiff competition with Willie D. Hart and Andrew and all the others in the streets. He sure does. The street stock, or street stock, the CSR Mini Cups came over. Most of them from Illinois. We had some folks there from Iowa. We had some first timers there. And some from Wisconsin, some first timers. I didn't get to see this race, but I understand it was a good one. It was a great one. Rick, it came to the finish uh, side by side, if that tells you anything, between uh, the winner, who is a 13 year old who loves to talk. <laughs> but, man, but he was great. You he can great. tell that he watched TV a lot. Yes. Watched absolutely. A lot of racing. Zachary Tinkle's a young man's name. Found out his dad's a doctor, and after the races, they give me a, it's a little kid's book that. Zachary actually wrote and illustrated. Wow, which is which is pretty good for a thirteen-year-old. So, so I'm guessing the kid's got some uh, yes. marbles upstairs too. But uh, his post-race interview, even though I didn't see the race and didn't see him doing the interview, I could hear it back in the pits, and it the crowd was, loved him. The, the track is just emotional for him. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's like Bristol. Yes, <laughs> but a cool kid. But uh, congratulations to Zach Tinkle. They'll be back uh, next month, also. Looking forward to having them there. And then uh, there's a new kid on the block in the Thunder Road. Yes. Uh, Dave Osborne has hopped into Rodney Oliver's second car I think this is his now. second week in the, <clears throat> in the car. Second yes, week, it, yes. Yes, it is. He set fast time. Uh, ch- track champion John Robbins won the heat race. Again, I didn't get to see this race, but I think this is two weeks in a row. Two weeks in a row, and had it not been, I think it was on lap 28, uh, what I understand from talking to the track crew down the infield, that going into turn one, John Robbins' steering wheel came loose, and he had some type of braking system and took it down the infield and got it down in there safely, and that's how... um, Dave got the win. Osborne got the win in the feature because John was leading pretty Yes, good. yeah. <laughs> he went, I knew he wasn't going to let it happen yeah. two weeks in a row. Boy, that's got to make you feel your fruit of the list. Oh, my gosh. I don't know company. how he did it, but the way he took it down to Rick, I mean, he, he knew what to do, um, took the car out of danger and himself out of danger, and, and wow, for not having a steering wheel <laughs> going into the turn, that's pretty good. So well, Rod, John still, John Robbins is still leading the points, and Doug Duggar's right behind him, of course, uh, Oz has started a little later in the season, so he's probably not going to be in the points. But these there. guys are putting on some great racing. And, and talking to Oz down there at the start-finish line, uh, he says they've got some interest from some other guys for next year. So they may very well, folks, you may see it anywhere from 16, 18 of these next year. That would be That would be fantastic. Yep. We had the Markham Welding Pro Compacts and um uh, Another versatile. Oh, back in that Thunder Roaster, we should say that I'm Trent, already on the program. well. Trent Gosser was in there for the second week and and did a great job this time around. And last week was his first time in it, and you can tell he's starting to get the feel of the car now. He finished uh, in fourth place. Yeah, so he I was did getting great. ready to talk about Trent Gosser because he just happened to set fast time with the Markham Weldon program. And you was gonna you was gonna go back and talk I about the. I was gonna th- segue. Oh, oh, okay. That's, that's a radio. That's a radio. <laughs> that term. is okay. Segway. Segway. Spell segway. S C G W A Y. About S C G U E. This is not only informative but educational program. Is. Well, you had your. I, I I have, I have. Trent Gosser set fast time. Matt Tharp, the points leader, has uh, won the first heat race, and actually, I believe that was Brian, Brian Slavey, Slavey that was in hopped into Corey's car. Corey couldn't be there Saturday night, so. And Corey's car is in the points, Chase, so uh, Brian hopped in that for, for Corey and won the second heat race. And then a veteran and track champion won the feature. Kevin Kevin Harmon came out victorious. Uh, had some uh, Trent and Matt Tharp on his tail there until uh, they got in some traffic there, and the traffic wouldn't seem to move out of Trent and Matt's way, but they got out of Kevin's way. So Kevin got a little bit of a distance from him towards the end there, but uh, it was good racing. Good to see you. Uh, Ryan Claiborne finally has yes. luck and get a decent finish in the feature. His car's had all kinds of troubles this year. And yeah, he's had one feature win, but you're right. It, it kind of From week to week, he's been having some issues. He finished in fourth, and Terry Neal from Newcastle finished in fifth place. You know, Newcastle, that's where I was born. There's a lot of good people from Newcastle, you know. Is this another segue? No, that wasn't a segue. <laughs> that was just a statement of fact. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> then uh, that was pretty much our show for Saturday night. But then that wasn't enough racing for us. No. We hopped in the uh, Sam Pierce Chevrolet Pace car and drove to Columbus, Ohio on yes. Sunday and watched. Uh, they had the Bud St. Amant Memorial. If you were a follower of ASA racing, especially Bud, Bud and Ruth or the uh, parents were the parents of uh, Gary St. Amant, and Bud passed away a couple of years ago, and they've got this race over there in his honor, and it was really some some. It was great racing. Good yes. racing. They had the uh, modifieds. It was okay. I mean, it took once them, they got it started, yeah, it took them forever to get started. I think there's three or four wrecks in it. I don't know what it is with the modifieds here in the past several years, and it's one of the reasons that I don't have them at the track because the racing's just not. They, they get in the line single file and, and they don't pass. I don't know. I don't know. I know the the drivers' quality are there because it's still some of the same drivers. Right. I, I think maybe there's too much parity in the race cars or something. They just can't pass. Right. So hopefully they'll work on that. But Brian Campbell won. Won that race there? The Columbus. modified race? No, Clump. I the, wasn't to that yet. Oh, now you've done okay. spoiled the surprise. Oh well, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know who won the modified race or uh, the yeah. or the comp- Tyler. Uh, oh, that's right, Tyler Knuckles. Tyler Knuckles, yes. the uh, son of Jeff and Cindy Knuckles, one of the owners of Columbus Speedway. I think it was his first win there. Yeah, I know. We ran into his mom earlier in the afternoon, and she was all excited because he had fast time, fast time, and yeah. then he went out and he dominated that race. He did. He was uh, he was a good half lap in front of the second place cars, but uh, he had a fast car. He did good deal, and he's a good good young man. So it's good to see him win. Then they had the uh, Bud Saint Amant 125 uh, with the CRA Super Series. It was a it was a okay was race. race. Uh, Brian Campbell had the top of the heap car. I mean, he just would. Even on restarts, when he would start back, it wouldn't take but a couple laps, and he was back out in the lead. He used that outside line a lot. Yes, he did. But the car to watch in that race yep. was, was Eddie Van Meter. I yes. forget where he started, but he, he started back, and he just picked them off he one did. at a time. And at that, if you've never been to Columbus Speedway, it's basically just a big It's a three-eighths oval. And, yes. and it's flat. Right. So about the only way you can do it is to set them up going into the corner. Yes. And Eddie just one at a time just kept picking them off, and on the restarts, uh, he was right there and pick off another he one. Did. And after the race, I told him, I said, you know, you were the show today because it was fun watching him come through the through the field. And he ended up with third place. He did. Kyle Jones was second. <laughs> Kyle Purvis was fourth, and Travis Braden, I believe he's the reigning champion in. I, I believe Super you're Series. right. Yes. Uh, he's running a limited schedule with the. With the uh, Super Series, and I think he's running more jigs this year, if Is I'm not mistaken. It? Yeah, it? yeah. Limited schedules that race talk. Yeah, <laughs> so, like Segway <laughs> Radio. <laughs> <laughs> we have a big weekend coming up uh, this weekend. It's our turn again. Uh, we've got uh, first responders night. This one we, we got rained out earlier in the season, but uh, this is a night that we can all of our fans and competitors can honor all of our first responders, our police officers, our firefighters, our EMT uh, people on the ambulance. Well-deserved recognition. They're coming out, and our good friends at MoFab are presenting this night, so we were, we're able to do it and honor these. There's going to be all kinds of things out there. We're going to have all kinds of police equipment, fire equipment, vehicles. Uh, we're going to have, and I forget his name, I could probably find it if I looked on the website, but we're going to have the police dog out there again doing a demonstration Uh-oh. in the infield. Is Jessica going to be there? Jessica's going to be <laughs> in the suit again. You know, last year, he, 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 I mean, his teeth didn't get through it, but the pressure, even she felt through that it. steel mesh, left a bruise on her arm. Wow, I did not know that. So I know we're always told when we stand in the infield to get up on the triangles. <laughs> I don't even know that. I'd be in the... <laughs> trucks with the doors yeah. locked because uh, i mean i love animals but those are trained, trained. for You're a right. specific purpose and but we've also got a uh, great racing coming up this weekend also with the mcgonagall engine late models the hearts auto figure eights we've got legends and we've also got the indy fast carts all there this saturday night in addition to all this other stuff we're doing with the uh, first responders. Gates we're, open at 5 and we race at 8. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk to Max Haynes with MoFab. Great guy, great friend, and uh, he's got some information you may not know about MoFab, but 
the uh, their business has been in Anderson for a long time, one of the longest uh, continuous businesses in Anderson. It'll be interesting to talk to Max when we come back. You're listening to Anderson Speedway's Track Talk. Heart attack, stroke, serious injury. A sudden health crisis can happen to anyone at any time. So when bad things happen, choose good people. St. Vincent Anderson Regional Hospital has the area's most advanced emergency care with a state-designated Level 3 trauma center, an internationally accredited chest pain center for heart attack patients, and advanced certification for primary stroke care. We have all the resources to deliver the care you need for any serious or life-threatening emergency. St. Vincent Anderson Regional is the only emergency department in the area with an on-site helicopter. And our $27 million state-of-the-art surgery pavilion opens later this year. Bad things can happen to anyone. Thankfully, good people are ready to help. Choose emergency care from St. Vincent Anderson Regional. The spirit of caring. Visit stvincent.org slash Anderson Regional to learn more. Honey, stop! Oh my gosh, that's Diggity's back there. You mean the new Diggity's Frozen Treat Factory? I heard it's unbelievable. Everybody's talking about it. They have everything yummy. Yeah, I heard they have ice cream, yogurt, custard, sorbet. And gelato, plus fruit smoothies, and that's just the beginning. I heard Diggity's has over 250 toppings, not 30 or 40 like those other places, and you can even get the candy to go separately. We can eat outside on their huge patio by the fire, too. Okay, let's see. Frozen yogurt, ice cream, custard, sorbet, and gelato. With 250 toppings or a plain old frozen yogurt shop with limited toppings? <laughs> Diggity's, Diggity's it is! Diggity's wants to cater your event. Diggity's can set up at your event inside or out and provide delicious smoothies, frozen cappuccinos, candies, and frozen treats to your guests. Diggity's is perfect for weddings, company picnics, group outings, sporting events, festivals, you name it, just call Diggity's. 765-393-0033 today for more information. MoFab Incorporated, where imagination is the only limitation. We serve residential, commercial, industrial, and municipal customers as your metals warehouse and fabrication center. We do all types of fabrication using the latest technology with unmatched speed, accuracy, and durability on any substrate. Our ornamental division handles all types of interior and exterior work, including rails, fences, gates, and more. So contact us at mofabbing.com to fabricate your dreams of tomorrow today. You won't believe these deals? They're too good to be true. You cannot miss this special. We're going to give you so much off, you won't believe it. Actual mileage may vary. Price does not include tax, title, and license. Some assembly required. Batteries not included. Objects in the are closer than they appear. Keep in a cooler place. It is highly unlikely that any sentiments expressed to express above anyway coincide with those of you. Wait, what'd they just say? At Auto Farm McCrocklin Ford in Middletown, we're not here to give you fast-talking deals. We take the time to make sure you understand what you're buying to make sure it meets your budget. If you're at Auto Farm McCrocklin Ford in Middletown, you're at the right place. This program is a presentation by Anderson Speedway. The content contained in this program is that of the host and guests, and not this station. Pink Floyd. How's, how's wow, that? Wow, I didn't even... That? Of course, you guys We're probably talked before I got here. We're back. Anderson Speedway's track talking. I was on top of that one, buddy. You've been known to do that. First line. The, the uh, I don't know if you've seen in the news or not, but the uh, lead guitarist from Mario Speedwagon passed away. Did not no, did not see that. One of my favorite groups. But also, we have heavy hearts at Anderson Speedway. If you haven't heard, you can go to our website and get all the information. But if you've been around racing in central Indiana any time in the last 50 years, you've met this man and I'm sure had a conversation with him because he liked liked to to talk. talk. Yes, he did. Uh, Finley Lane, uh, who worked our back gate for years, uh, passed away Saturday Saturday evening, actually, while we were racing. We got the word, I think, about the time we were starting our heat races. But... uh, he had, he had not been in real good health the past several years, although um, he was out the track a couple of weeks ago, and then he worked the uh, pit gate at Winchester, Winchester Labor. Labor Day weekend. But uh, it wasn't looking real good, but Finley was Finley if you ever met him. And uh, he w- was right there, supporter of racing Anderson Speedway, Winchester Speedway to the very end, I'm sure. And he had a wealth of knowledge and a wealth of information. He was always bringing me old programs yes. and old articles that he got. I remember Finley from back in the early 60s when he would be at the front gate there passing out the programs yep. at the front gate, the Sun Valley, Old Sun Valley Speedway programs, him and his son. Yep. 
uh, his uh, his details on his services tomorrow from uh, 12 until 8 o'clock will be a viewing. It's in Bluffton at the, uh, let me see, the Toma Rich Lemire Funeral Home. That's in Bluffton. That's from 12 to 8 tomorrow. Then the funeral will be Thursday morning, I believe, at 8, at 1030 at the funeral home. You may uh, view view Finley uh, an hour before that. They've asked that there not be flowers sent, but uh, they are asking that any memorials be made to, uh, in Finley's memory, to the Panetto Volunteer Fire Department. That's where that's where Finley lives. So uh, keep uh, his legacy will continue at the sure Speedway, will. not with all the stuff he's left me, but also his granddaughter Rebecca works our back gate right. now, just like her grandpa did, and uh, I know she's taking it pretty tough, so uh, if you can't make it up there, at least uh, please remember Finley and his family and their thoughts and prayers. Right. On the line with us this evening, again, this weekend, it's the big uh, first responders night presented by our good friends at uh, MoFab here in Anderson, and on the line with me right now is none other than Max Haynes. Max, how are you doing this evening, buddy? Uh, I'm doing great. How about you guys? Yeah, we're doing good. We're doing doing well. Hey, uh, for those in our listening audience that might not know or have been living in a cave, let let them kind of know what uh, MoFab does. Well, uh, we're a metals warehouse and fabrication center, so we stock steel, stainless steel, and aluminum, and we sell to other fabricators. And we also help fabricators and people uh, that don't have the capacity that we do. So we do shearing, bending, plasma cutting, and uh, soon to have a brand-new water jet cutting machine uh, that's supposed to be in operation 1st of October. And uh, so it'll allow us to cut other materials, glass, granite, rubber, uh, well, for your racers, uh, graphite, um, things like that. So we're really excited about that. It's it'll have uh, it's a seven foot by fourteen foot table with a multi axis head and also a rotating attachment. So it's it's a very sophisticated machine. Uh, the only other one that our dealer had sold one to in the state of Indiana was Rolls Royce. So. They wow. Not, they're the probably art. not doing work for other people. <laughs> no, you're right. Well, one of the cool things about your about your company is, and of course I've been close for years, you guys do a lot of work for us out at the Speedway, is that you can do the large jobs, but you're also to the you're also small enough that you can do customized work, you know, a specific one off piece for folks too. Yes, sir. If uh if you wanna your wheel straightened, we'll do that, or weld your lawnmower handle, or if you need uh, uh, large fabrication, we can handle that, whether it's steel, stainless steel, or aluminum. So, yeah. Speaking speaking of uh, one-off projects, if anybody drives down uh, the bypass to pass the new Myers Auto World, I understand the big globe uh, you guys uh, created, and also the time capsule capsule for the sesquicentennial that's now uh, underground for 50 years yeah yeah we uh, built the uh, globe for myers auto world that was a fun project uh took up a little space in here because it is about 10 foot diameter and then we uh, broke it in half and uh, got powder coated right here in town by uh, carrera industries and uh, the time capsule that was more of a donation than a job but uh yeah, it, uh, it was a fun project. We uh, we had free reign to design it how we wanted for the most part, and uh, it actually uh, it's not going to be buried though. It's going to be on display uh, in the town hall. So oh really? I didn't realize. Yeah, that. yeah. Anybody can go by and see it at any time, and and uh, just wonder about what's in there. I guess. <laughs> well, cool. Well, I know. I know. Not only you're you're very involved in your business, Max, but you you and your dad and the whole family have done a lot for the community. And I think it's really appreciate you step up this weekend and help us honor the uh, first responders. What's that? What's that mean to you guys? Oh, I, I mean, uh, we count on those folks to do their job every day. Uh, you know, sometimes we take them for granted, but it's. 
uh, you know, it's very fortunate. I was at the uh, city council uh, this past Tuesday, or last Thursday, actually, excuse me, and uh, I was there when they uh, introduced nine new firemen and uh, when they were talking about how they were chosen out of, I think there was 27 applicants, and it was a blind draw, and they just went through the testing, and and nobody knew names or race or gender or anything. They just took the top ten, and I just thought that that was just the only way to go because when our lives are in hand, we want the best of the best, you know. Right. Yeah, exactly. And we've got it here in Anderson. I don't care what anybody says. I've seen them in action. It's good to work. Well, Max, uh, we appreciate you spending the time with us this evening. We're going to have a great time Saturday night. Look forward to having you and your family and employees and everybody out to uh, watch some good racing. We appreciate you guys. You guys always treat us like kings. And if anybody is ever looking for a, a company event out there, I would highly recommend it. We've done it about five years, and it's always been uh, treated real well. I really appreciate you guys. Well, thank Good. you, Max. Uh, thank you for the kind words. You have a great evening. Uh, you too. See ya. Thanks. Max Haynes with uh, MoFab, and his dad, Bill, is pretty much pretty much now, I think, retired, although I think he probably still has Occasionally his comes in. Yeah. A great <laughs> friend of mine, a fellow Shriner, and uh, we, we've just been friends forever, and they're great people. They do, they do, great they job. do a lot of great work on our bleachers out the track, and uh, couldn't do it without them. That's right. Again, this weekend, it's First Responders Night presented by MoFab, Inc., uh, McGonagall Engine Lake Models, Hearts Auto Figure 8s, Legends, Indy Fast Carts, gates open at 5, we race at 8, come out, see all, come out and see all the neat police and fire equipment. That's right. We might uh, let folks know what's coming up next week because we got a division coming back to Anderson Speedway. We do. Real quickly, I uh, announced this a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we're going to have a Thunder Car race at the Speedway as part of our first championship night of the season. Uh, and Jessica's, I don't know if she's got them. Yep, she does. If you go to our website and scroll, the scroll goes across the top. There's, there's rules for the Thunder Cars. I'm going to get her the purses. We're actually going to have two Thunder Car races this year. Uh, one, uh, week, at, week from Saturday. And then at Interstate, Intersect Championship Night, along with the, uh, the Madison County Stormwater Partnership Kids Bicycle right. Races, that's on the 26th, and our good friends at Culligan are, are helping with that also, so that's going to be big, and we'll talk about that next week. But the Thunder Car Rules, we're going to run a 30-lap feature this first time, and then the 17th of next month, we're running a 100-lap feature, and uh, it's all in preparation. We're uh, tweaking the rules a little bit to get ready so we can publish good rules. The division, the Thunder Cars are coming back to Anderson Speedway in 2016. And I think you got them back for Turkey Bash Day, too. We do. Yeah. And also uh, for 2016, I've talked to a lot of folks, and we've got some stability in our technical department now. We're going to have the, uh, the Hearts Auto figure eights in 2016 also. So we're going to have a great 2016, yes, we but we still got to get get through 2015. We do. Have a lot of fun. <laughs> Come out and see us at the Speedway. Hello, and Jenny. Yep, I, I haven't, haven't seen her yes. for a while. Yeah, We're you need to go over and see her. Yes, you do. Well, we appreciate you spending the time with us this evening. We look forward to seeing you uh, this Saturday night. This Saturday night at the track. For Gary Mong, I'm Rick Dawson. We'll see you at the racetrack. Have a good week. <laughs>